As an exporter or trade practitioner, it is essential to fully understand what these codes are, how they are structured, the importance of these codes, and how they are used. Our facilitator today, Mr. Vincent, Mr. Vincent Atkins, is the Trade Policy and Technical Advisor to CARICOM LDC at the Office of the Trade Negotiation CARICOM Secretariat. His main responsibilities include, but is not limited to, the coordination of the development of CARICOM's positions on goods related market access issues in external trade negotiations undertaken by CARICOM. Mr. Akin holds a master's, of, a master's in Agricultural Economics from the University of Florida, a Bachelor's in Economics from the University of the West Indies, a Diploma in International Relations, and an LLB from the University of London. Note that all questions will be entertained after Mr. Atkins' presentation, so feel free to note your questions and be prepared to submit such in the general webinar chat box after the presentation. I will now turn it over to Mr. Atkins. Hello, good morning. Hi. Of course, Ms. thanks Ms. Phillips for the introduction. And let me thank all participants for participating in this session on the HS. Of course, we had a similar session sometime last year, and it is my pleasure again to discuss the HS. What, what, what is commonly called the HS. The actual name is the Harmonize Commodity Description and Coding System. I hope to make the presentation within a period of about an hour, and then the last 30 minutes will devote to questions. So I trust that if you have any particular concerns, if there is a need for clarification of any particular matter, anything that I have said for which you need further clarification, feel free to send in your questions and I'll make every effort to respond to those questions within the last 30 minutes of the session. Of course, you should be able to see the PowerPoint that I have here but at some point, I will ask you to refer to a document which uh, Ms. Phillips would have shared with you, in particular, a document on the 2017 version of the HS. You may have received a 2012 version which would not open because the, the, the version in place at the moment is the 2017, although in CARICOM, we still use the 2012. So I would want you to have access to that HS nomenclature 2017 uh, document at the least. In addition, uh, it would be helpful if you have opened the CARICOM chapter 10 of the CT as well as chapter 73 of the CT, both of which again Ms. Phillips would have made available to you. Now, you noted that I started off by saying that the HS is the harmonized commodity description and coding system. So there are two <laughs> elements. There are two elements. Yes, I think there's a mic which is not muted. The, right. So the, our objective today is to examine the structure and the general rules of interpretation of the HS, the Harmonized Commodity Description and Coding System. Notice the two components of the name. 
One is the commodity description, and secondly, the coding system. The term harmonized being important here, principally because across countries, different products may have different needs. Last year, I started off by showing a photo of a, a fruit known, which you, you in Trinidad would call Pomerac. I'm sure um, those of you from Trinidad would be familiar with that fruit, Pomerac. But if you were, go, you were to go to uh, Jamaica and show someone that same fruit, he or she would tell you it's called Malaika apple. And if you go to Belize, it would be called a Malay apple. And if you go to Guyana, interestingly enough, it is called cashew. Unlike, very much unlike what we call cashew the, from, the, from the cashew nut. So this tells you then one commodity may have different names in different countries. And as a result, if we were to engage in trading in a particular commodity with those various names, serious difficulties could arise. Similarly, if we were to compare uh, statistics on production or on sin systems for different commodities, difficulties would arise if the same commodity uh, would have different names across different countries. And so what the HS seeks to do is to adopt a harmonized commodity, a description for commodities. So a specific product would have a particular description which would apply across all jurisdictions. And similarly, and, and importantly, the HS assigns a particular code, which is a six digit number to each commodity group or product, not necessarily a single item, it could be a group of, of, of products, but that six digit numerical code is assigned to a particular product and is used across uh, all countries applying the harmonized commodity description and coding system, the HS system. So you would appreciate then that the HS seeks to bring harmony across countries in the nomenclature used for particular product by adopting a common description as well as a common code to identify those products. And so it is that particular system which we some of you may be familiar with the SITC classification of commodities. And of course, prior to the adoption of the HS, there were all uh, other systems in place. But since 1983, when the HS was developed by the World Customs Organization, this particular system has been used very widely and uh, is, is, is now the most commonly used method of uh, classifying products for the purpose of customs, for the purpose of taxes, for the purpose of conducting trade negotiations, for the purpose of maintaining um, statistics on transportation of goods and that kind of thing. Essentially, the HS may be described as a multi-purpose international product nomenclature as I said earlier, developed by the World Customs Organization. It comprises just above 5,000 commodity groups, each identified by a six digit code arranged in a legal, logical structure and supported by well-defined rules to achieve uniform classification. And all of those elements are very important. The number of commodity groups are de uh, is determined by the world, a particular committee of the World Customs Organization. The six digit code, which is uh, assigned to products, again, is uniform across all countries and must be adopted, cannot be modified by countries. 
It follows a particular structure, a particular order, which countries are not at liberty to change. And there are very specific rules, some of which we will go through uh, in order to achieve the classification of products. The HS is used by more than 200 countries and economies as a basis for their customs tariffs, that's the main use of the HS, and the collection of international trade statistics. So that the cost, uh, uh, if, if, uh, given that the World Customs Organization developed the, 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 the HS system, the primary use is for the uh, administration of customs tariff or customs duties. So that if you take the case of Trinidad and Tobago, the tariff, the national tariff of Trinidad and Tobago would be based on the HS. Of course, there's some modification to the HS, but at the core of the national tariff is the HS. Over 98% of the merchandise in international trade is classified in terms of the HS. So that if you're thinking of the products which are traded, invariably there is an HS code for those products. Very few products, primarily pro uh, products which are new and for which a product for which a code has not been assigned. Um, uh, would, 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 would enjoy the benefit of having such a code. The WTO uses the HS to classify goods for the purposes of negotiations and for implementation of commitments, in particular tariff commitments. And it is not just the WTO hearing carry come when we negotiate trade agreements, we identify products according to the HS code. And uh, when we implement our tariff commitments, again, we do so on the basis of a schedule, of a schedule which, is, which is structured along the lines of the HS. It is also used as a basis for administering internal taxes so that uh, national governments in the administration of their own taxes, whether it is VAT or consumption taxes, would use the HS as a structure to identify those products and to assign taxes. In the conduct of trade policies, trade defense measures, uh, such as countervailing uh, duties or anti-dumping measures, the products are identified on the basis of their HS codes monitoring of control goods so that if there are substances, uh, pharmaceutical products, arms, ammunition, these are identified by means of those codes. For the rules of origin, those rules which will determine whether a uh, product benefits from preferences granted under a trade arrangement, again, the HS is a um, uh, critical element of those rules or critical element in the identification of products to which those rules are assigned. Transport statistics, price monitoring, quota controls, compiling national accounts, and conducting economic research and analysis. The harmonized system is governed by a convention, a particular set of rules, particular agreement, and that convention is at the HS is, is updated every five to six years so that there may be changes in commodity description, there may be reclassification of products, re, uh, changing codes, or assigning codes to new products. You would appreciate that year after year, new products come on stream, new products enter international trade. At the same time, some products uh, fall out of international trade. For example, um, I am sure that it would be very difficult um, at this time to, for, for one to trade in video cassettes and, 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 and that kind of thing. And so products which, which are obsolete 
would, would fall out of international trade and therefore fall out of the HS system. The convention, of course, is signed by a number of, 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 of countries which are party to the convention. In our case, in the, in the region, although uh, all countries of CARICOM use the HS, Haiti is the only country which is a party to the, to the convention. And one important um, point to note is that every country which is a party to the convention must adopt the revised con or the most current con uh, uh, version of the HS once it is adopted. So that in the case of the 2017 version of the HS which came on stream from January 2017, parties to the convention would have to use that particular version of the, um, of the HS. Other countries, such as Trinidad and Tobago, and other countries of CARICOM uh, may choose not to use, may choose to update to the more um, recent uh, version in, in subsequent years. Um, as a matter of fact, CARICOM countries and the, the CT of CARICOM uh, is based on the HS. Uh, the 2012 version of the HS. In terms of the structure, it's important to note that the HS is based on a hierarchy of 21 sections, 97 chapters, and as I mentioned before, just over 5,000 commodity classes, or what generally referred to as 5,000 subheadings. We will, uh, in, in a short while, come to the headings. I should have mentioned there that they are just above 1,200 headings, which also form part of the HS system. But suffice it to say at this time that all the products are arranged in 21 sections, 97 chapters, 5,000 commodity classes, 1,200 uh, headings. However, just it's only 96 chapters that are used as chapter 77 is reserved for future use. There is also a chapter or there are chapters 98 and 99, but these are used um, by customs administration in uh, individual countries to apply special transactions in trade. So when we think of the HS, which applies across the board to all countries, we refer merely to the 97 chapters. On this screen, you note the, 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 some of the sections. Section one here is live animals and animal products, so that all live animals and animal products, unless otherwise noted in what are called section notes, would be listed in section one of the HS. Then uh, within section one, you would note chapter one, which you would uh, include all live animals. Again, except if the chapter itself, itself indicates that uh, particular live animals are not included. Meat and edible meat offal would be in chapter two, fish and crustacean in chapter three, dairy products in chapter four, and so on. Then we move on to section two vegetable products. So section one would be animals and live animals and animal products. Section two would be live products. And we start off with live trees in chapter six, edible vegetables in chapter seven, edible fruits and nuts in chapter eight, coffee, tea, meat and spices have a special chapter of its own in chapter nine, cereals in 10, and you can see the structure so that we have each chapter uh, falling within the section, dealing with a particular product 
or group of products. If we move on to section three, we have animal or vegetable fats and oils. Now, you note that the structure of the section moves from the very basic primary products, live animals and, and animal products, uh, fruit, uh, live plants, uh, fruits and vegetables, and then we are moving to more industrial products, animal or vegetable fats and oils and their cleavages. Then in section four, prepared foodstuffs, beverages, spirits and vinegar and so on, and so on. If you, if you, if you turn to the HS nomenclature that I shared with you, the, the, the 2017 version of the HS nomenclature, you notice all of the 21 sections and the various chapters which fall uh, on the, each of those sections up to chapter 97, which of course, uh, in, in the case of 97, it is works of art, collector's pieces, and antiques. So it is important to understand the structure of the HS because if you are interested in a particular product or if your firm is engaged in the trade in a particular product, you need only to uh, identify the section of the HS in which that product is, 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 is likely to fall and the chapter within that section. So that if you are dealing with chocolates, for example, that would be preparation of cocoa, cocoa and cocoa preparation. That would fall under section four, which is prepared foodstuffs. And then you can, you can um, uh, look at chapter 18, which deals specifically with cocoa and cocoa preparations. The numbering system of the HS actually begins with the chapter. We noted earlier that when I identified a section, we noticed the chapters fall within a section. Then with the four digit heading, then the six digit subheading. So we have three categories. A chapter, within its chapter, we would have a number of four digit headings. And under each heading, there would be subheadings, which is comprised of six digits. Now, I must, I should mention that the national tariff may include more than six digits. In fact, often it does include more than six digits. In some cases, it includes eight digits. And in other cases, as in the case of Trinidad and Tobago, 10 digits. But the eight and 10 digits are part of the national tariff and not part of the HS. The HS extends only to six digits, but individual countries are, have the liberty to further break down subheadings into the eight and six digit level. The CARICOM CT, for example, is based on an eight-digit coding. However, the first six digits would conform with the HS system. And so that is why I said earlier, your national tariff is based on the HS, because the first six digits of the national tariff would uh, be uh, equivalent to the digits the six-digit code of the international system. The subheadings, which as I said, are breakdown of the headings, are denoted by dashes. And, and I will show you an example shortly. There are two examples of dashes. There is a single dash. Some of you may have looked at the HS code and perhaps not even aware 
of the different dashes or the significance of, of a dash. But, but it's important to, to, to note that there is a single dash which denotes a primary subheading and a double dash which is a division of a single dash subheading. It is a breakdown of a single dash. So you may have a single dash subheading which is further broken down into a double dash uh, subheading and you may also have a further breakdown of the double dash into a triple dash subheading. You generally, that would apply in the um, national um, tariffs or in our case in the region in the, in the um, CET. Let me show you an example. Chapter one of the HS deals with live animals. Of course, chapter one would fall within section one. Section one is comprised of five chapters. You have the copy of the nomenclature. You can take a look at it either now or in your, uh, after this session. Section one is comprised of live animals and animal products. There are five chapters in that section. The first chapter deals only with live animals. Chapter two deals with meat and edible meat offal. Chapter three deals with fish and crustaceans. Chapter four, dairy products. And chapter five, products of animal origin not elsewhere specified in the previous chapters. Let us look at chapter one, live animals. I mentioned earlier that under each chapter there are headings and subheadings. The heading is at the four digit level. So the first heading here is 0101. Live horses, asses, mules, and guineas. Of course, those of you not familiar with the term hini, the hini is the offspring of a female um, ass, a donkey, and, and a horse, as opposed to a mule, which is the offspring of a female of a horse, a female horse, and a male donkey. But live horses, asses, mules, and hinis all fall within that heading. And the code 0101 is assigned to that heading. However, the heading is further broken down into subheadings. We have horses, asses, 010130, and other. Let's try to understand that structure. All Live horses, asses, mules, and hinnies are covered under the heading 0101. However, that heading is broken down into three subheadings. Horses would be one subheading, one primary subheading, and that is why you notice a dash, a single dash before horses. You notice that the, 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 what appears to be a high thing, a, a, a dash before horses. So this is a primary subheading. The other primary subheading is asses, 010130. And the third primary subheading is other. That is other animal or animals other than horses and asses. That would include your mules and hinnies. So other actually it refers to mules and hinnies because notice the other subheadings already cover horses and asses. Now, let's go back to the first subheading, horses. Notice that horses, the single dash horses, 
is further broken down into two subheadings. So this would be secondary subheadings on, uh, indicated by the double dash. You notice 010121 dash dash, pure bred breeding animals. What this tells me, I am looking at two classes of horses. 010121 would refer only to pure bred breeding horses. Never mind the word animals here. Remember, this is a breakdown of the subheading horses. So it is pure bred breeding animals. And the second secondary subheading, 010129, indicated by the double dash other, refers to horses other than pure bred breeding animals. So if I want uh, to refer, if I want to classify a horse which is not pure bred, then the code for that would be 010129. If the horse is a pure bred horse, then the code for that is 010121. It tells me then in your customs, uh, your national, in your, your customs uh, uh, tariff, the, uh, which would identify the tariff treatment for, for various animals. If I want to find out what the tariff treatment is, what the import duty on purebred uh, horses would be, I would have to look at the code 010121. But if the horse is not purebred, I would have to look at the code 010129. In the case of the second primary subheading, asses, there is no further breakdown, no further subheading. There is just one primary subheading, 010130, which tells me that all asses, whether purebred or not, would be included in 010130. So if I want to look at the level of trade, if I want to see the customs duty pertaining to asses, whether they are pre-bred or not, I would have to look at 010130. And then the last primary subheading, other, 010190, early on, remember what I said? It refers to all live horses, asses, mules, and hinnies, which are not classified in the first two uh, subheadings. In other words, they refer to all mules and hinnies, which tells me that mules and hinnies are lumped together in one code. Now, if I ask you, what is the difference between other in 010190 and other in 010129? Of course, it is important to note the distinction, apart from the difference in the codes. 010129, other refers here to other horses. Other in 010190 refers to other animals besides asses and horses. And as I said before, the only other animals we can refer to here would be mules and hinnies because the heading, the heading covers only live horses, asses, mules, and hinnies. You could not include cattle, for example, bovine animals or swine in 010190 because that is not part of the heading. They, 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 it's not covered under 0101. Let me give you another example because it is very important for you to understand that structure. Once you do, you get the full essence of the HS. Let us take 
the second heading, heading 0102, live bovine animals. That's a very broad category. So the heading is generally a broad category. If we want to go to very specific products, we then have to look at the subheadings, either the primary subheadings or the secondary subheadings. And remember, even then, those subheadings could refer to either individual products or group of products. Look at the first primary subheading. How do I know it is a primary subheading? There is a single dash. And here we have the first You can hear you do. Um, the the could you, could someone please unmute your mic? I can hear you. Uh, the first primary subheading is Camelita, could you please unmute your mic? The first primary subheading is cattle. Uh -huh. And of course, Ms. Roachford, Camelita Roachford, please mute your mic. The first primary subheading is cattle, of which there are two subheadings to secondary subheadings. 010121, pure bred breeding animals. 01229. Other. Of course, both subheadings refer to cattle. Both secondary subheadings or double dash subheadings refer to cattle because they fall under that subheading, that primary subheading, cattle. The first secondary subheading or double dash subheading refers to purebred breeding cattle, never mind the term animal. Remember, it falls under the subheading cattle, purebred breeding cattle. And naturally, other, which is 010229, would refer to cattle, which is not purebred. So if you bring a half-breed, if there is ever something called a half-breed, then that would be classified in 010229. But it would be cattle, not a half-breed monkey or half-breed um, whatever other animal you can think of. Because here we are dealing with the primary subheading cattle. Similarly, if you look at the second sub primary subheading, which falls under 0102. That, uh, there, here is buffalo, and you have two, no, I'm, I'm, it, we, we, right, we have two uh, subheadings, two secondary or double dash subheadings. The first one, 0102, which is the same four digits as the heading, 0102. 31. This would be the pure bread breeding buffalo. And 010239 would be other buffalo or buffalo other than pure pure bread. So all other buffalo uh, uh, except pure bread would be in 010239. And you look just below that, there is 010290. I know that this is a primary subheading. It is not a breakdown of buffalo. It is a breakdown of the heading live bovine animals. It is a primary subheading because there is a single dash. And this would refer to all other bovine animals besides buffalo and cattle. 
So there may be a number of other different types of, of animals which, which falls within the classification of bovine animals, and these would be classified or lumped together in 010290 other. Of course, that is in the harmonized system. What you may find at the at their national level or within the CARICOM CE, 010290 may be broken down further. In other words, that uh, subheading, which is called other, this last subheading, in your national tariff, you may choose to break it down further to an eight-digit number. So you'd have 010990, and you may put 9010 to refer to um, a particular um, species of bovine animal, which is not, of course, cattle or buffalo, which you may want to single out. Next example, and I am using several examples because I said once you get the hang of this, then you get the hang of the HS. Everything becomes very easy, and everything it becomes easy to interpret the, the, the both the national tariff as well as the um, the CARICOM CT. The, the the third subheading, sorry, the third heading on the chapter one. Of course, the first heading was zero one zero one. Second heading zero one zero two, which was the bovine animals. Third heading, 0102, live swine. And it must be live because remember, chapter 101 only deals with live animals. 03 deals with the swine. And so we have the live swine. There are two primary subheadings. Pure bred breeding animals. The animal of concern here is swine. So we are, talk, we are talking about pure bred swine. And the other one would be all other swine. Uh, that is all swine other than pure bred. Now notice the breakdown. The breakdown here is according to the weight of the live animal, of the live swine. We have those 010391 weighing less than 50 kilograms. This could not include pure bred swine because all pure bred swine is covered in the subheading 010310. 010391 refers to all other swine which is all other uh, of swine, which is not purebred. And these are classified according to their weight. So let us use the term impurebred swine, um, weighing less than 50 kilograms, and those weighing more than 50 kilograms. So governments and customs may want to distinguish um, between um, swine, that is non-purebred swine, on the basis of their weight, either for the purpose of monitoring um, the trade in, in the different uh, categories of those products or for assigning different uh, levels of duties, and so you have those breakdowns. It tells me then that if you bring in a purebred uh, pig, which is, which weighs more than 50 kilograms, the relevant HS code would be 010310 because all pure bred swine is covered in that particular subheading regardless of weight. The second, subhead, the second primary subheading only covers non pure bred breeding swine. And the pattern continues. Uh, for live sheep and goats, we have 0104 as the heading, and you have two primary subheadings, sheep and goats. But notice, 
In that case, there are no further breakdowns in the HF, which tells me that all sheep and goat, regardless of weight, regardless of whether it is pure bread or not, would be covered under code 010410, and the same thing holds for goats. I will use as a last example 01. Uh, 0106 other live animals. Now notice in 005, we have live poultry. We started off with the um, uh, horses, asses. We moved on to the bovine animals. We looked at the third category, 0103, dealt with swine. 0104 heading deals with sheep and goats. 0105 deals with live poultry. Of course, the meat of those animals are in chapter two, not in chapter one. We are only dealing with live animals here. And then the last uh, heading is 0106, which deals with all other live animals. And so you have a number of subheadings, a number of primary subheadings. First, we have the mammals, which is the first primary subheading, and that subheading, and that is broken down into several two that subheadings: the primates, whales, and, and dolphins, etc. We have camels and other camelids, whatever are camelids. Uh, under 14, 0106, 14, rabbits and hare. And any other mammal which is not specified above would be in 010619. So if you are thinking then of a kangaroo, for example, that would be in 010619. Because a kangaroo is a mammal, but it is not among the primates. It is not among the whale, dolphins, etc. It is not classified with camels, um, unless a, a kangaroo is a camelid and subject to, 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 to the dictate of science. Um, I don't think a camel falls within the classification of rabbits and hares. So the only relevant classification would be other. 010619. If you are thinking of a dog, you're bringing in a dog. A dog would not be in it. A dog is a mammal, but a dog would not be in 010611 because it is not a primate. It would not be in 010612. It would not be in 010613, which deals with camel. A dog is nowhere close to being a rabbit, so it is not in 010614. And so, never mind, you do not notice dog in the, in the, in the code. Dog will be classified in 010619. Now, this would be a good example where the national tariff would break down 010619 into 10 and 8 or 10 digit levels to identify dogs and cats and, and all other uh, mammals that, that may be of, of, of interest. So you may have a 0106 1910, 0106 1915, 0106 1930 to refer to dogs, cats, and any other animal uh, except, of course, those which are listed in the subheadings above. If you look at the next subheading, reptiles, which includes snakes and turtles, all reptiles would fall under 010620. But of course, there are a number of different types of reptiles, the iguana, the lizard, the crocodile, and so on. They, they would all be under 010620, but again, in, in the HS, but at the national level, that may be broken down to eight or 10 digit levels to refer to all the um, iguanas as uh, having a group of itself, a code of itself, or by itself, 
um, lizards is a code by itself, alligator is a code by itself, but that would be at the eighth digit or, as I said, in some instances, the 10 digit level. Similarly, we are looking at verbs, uh, a primary uh, subheading broken down into a number of secondary verbs or two or, the, or two dark subheading. Verbs would include verbs of prey, um, and then we have zero one zero six thirty two would include your parrots, parakeets, macaws, and cockatoos. Zero one zero six thirty three ostriches, and so on. And then all other live birds. So if you have a bird which could, which cannot be classified among um, ostriches, parrots, and and uh, birds of prey, that would be on the zero one zero six thirty nine. I think by now you should get the drift. Insects, of course, two secondary subheadings or double dash. Bees would be one class of insects. All other insects would be 010649 in the HS. Again, I said, if you look at the CT, other, that other 010649 may be broken down into further um, groupings if, if uh, it is uh, perceived that there is a need to identify specific group of of insects within that category. So if you want to pull out your butterflies or your or your or your um, grasshoppers for some reason or the other, because you have an interest in trading in 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 in, in grasshoppers because of the their the, their delicacy, then 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 you may assign a to a further two digits. So it becomes zero one zero six forty nine ten. That's a breakout of other to identify in a particular group. But as I said, that would not be part of the HS. That would be part of it of your national um, tariff or in, again in the region, part of the regional tariff. Good. Now I will not I will not more spend more time on 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 um, on, um, on, on, on the, um, the breakdown of those, but it's important to mention that many sections and chapters are preceded by notes. It's important to know that. These notes are known as legal notes because they have legal force as an integral part of the HS. So you must pay attention to the notes. For example, in chapter 10, there are notes which tells, which comes at the beginning of the chapter, which tells me that the products specified in the headings of this chapter are to be classified in those headings only if grains are present whether or not in the air or in the stock. So it tells me then the cereals of chapter 10 refer only to cereals in which grains are present. You would not, for example, find wheat flour in chapter 10 because wheat, because flour is not covered in chapter 10. There must be the grain, and in that case, we would have the wheat itself in grain. But it tells me in B that the chapter does not cover grains which have been hulled or otherwise worked. However, rice, which is husk, milled, polished, glazed, parboiled, or broken, remains classified in heading. 10.06. So notwithstanding the fact that the chapter does not cover cereals unless they are in grain form, it tells me that rice, which has been husked, milled, parboiled, or broken, is classified in the chapter. In fact, rice is on the heading 10.6. And it tells me also 
that heading point heading 10.05 does not cover sweet corn so even if the sweet corn may be in grain form it is not covered under chapter 10 that would be covered in chapter 7. what is important here to note is that the notes the section notes are important these notes are, are known as legal notes because they have legal force as an integral part of the HS in order to determine whether a product ought to be classified in a particular uh, chapter or subheading, the notes must be taken into account. These are the notes for the live animals. Any any reference in this section to a particular genus or species of an animal, except where the context requires, includes a reference to the young of that genus or species. So when we speak of a live animal, we speak also of the young of the live animal. There is an important note uh, to chapter one, which says, this chapter covers all live animals except fish and crustaceans hmm, of heading, and it gives me the particular heading, so that the fish and crustaceans mentioned here would not be covered in chapter one. These are covered in chapter three. It also tells me if you look at C, Chapter one does not cover animals of heading 9508. Now, if you were to go to 9508 of the HS, you'd notice that 9508 pertains to animals which form part of a show such as a circus, animals used in entertainment. So that never mind, you'd be dealing with a horse, a live horse, which would generally be covered under chapter one because of the particular section note which says that animals of, uh, of chapter 9508 are not covered um, in this chapter. Horses in, or, or any other animal used in a circus or for a show would be classified in chapter 95. So you have to take account of the the um, chapter notes and the section notes in order to determine where a product is classified. Now, the classification structure of the CARICOM CT, as I said before, is based on the HS. The general rules for the interpretation of the HS and the relevant chapter and section notes also um, serve as the basis for classification of the CT, although there are additional uh, CARICOM notes to, to guide classification. This is an example of the classification used by CARICOM. Um, we have horses, PR 010121 is the first subheading. We have the first double dash of heading is pure breeding animals and other, um, other animals. Um, then we have 01022910. Notice there are three dashes, which tells me that the, the, the group other, other pure bred breeding horses is broken down, broken down into race horses not for breeding and other horses. In other words, the group of uh, horses which are not purebred in CARICOM is further divided into race horses not for breeding and other horses. In addition, if you look at asses, under the harmonized system, we only had one subheading. All asses were classified under 010130, but CARICOM has broken it down into pure bred breeding asses and other asses. So that is why you have 010130010 
and 0101-3019. So this shows you here we have two eight-digit subheadings on the axis, and, uh, which, which gives an example of the breakdown that I mentioned, which can take place at the, at the um, CARICOM level. And the same thing goes for all the other categories. If you look at this page which I have here, look at the very last, uh, or the, the, the last, the, 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 um, the, 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 the last three subheadings, dogs, cats, and other. Remember under the HS, we have only one primary subheading for other mammals, all other mammals. But CARICOM has broken that down into eight-digit subheadings. Dogs as one group, cats as one group, and all the others would be in the third group. All other, other um, mammals would be in the group 0106-1990. Now I realize time is going very fast against us. I will spend the next five minutes looking at some of the principles um, upon, on, on which the they, they, um, classification of goods are based. Although that would be most relevant to persons engaged in actually classifying um, the goods. If you are a trader, you are a firm, and you simply want to identify your product, you would not be as interested in the rules, but they are, um, they are, uh, uh, it is important for you to know how the products are classified. First of all, it is important to know, the first rule says that the titles of sections, chapters, and subchapters are provided for ease of reference only. For legal purposes, classification shall be determined according to the terms of the headings. In other words, when a good is classified, the section, the title of the section or the title of the chapter is only a guide. It is not binding. What is binding is the terms or the description provided in the headings. Earlier on, I mentioned live animals, does not include the animals of 9508. So that never mind the chapter is entitled Live Animals, that is not binding. A live animal may find itself in another chapter, as it does in that case in chapter 95. What is binding, however, is the heading and the section or chapter notes. And so what one of the, 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 the details which, which must be considered or what that you must pay attention to is uh, or are the details provided in the, the headings as well as the details provided in the section and chapter notes. Any reference in a heading to an article shall be taken to include a reference to that article incomplete or unfinished, provided that, as presented, the incomplete or unfinished article has the essential character of the complete or unfinished article. In other words, that is saying to me that if you bring in a product which is not complete, it is not finished, that product would be classified as if it were a finished article once the product has the essential character of the finished product. For example, if you bring a motor vehicle, a motor car into the country, but you bring it in without the wheels, the tires, you bring it out within tires. Of course, a motor vehicle does not run without it, it, without wheels. However, the fact that it is incomplete does not prevent the classification of the vehicle 
as a motor car. It would be treated as a motor car because it has all the essential qualities, essential characteristics, the shape of a motor car. And the same thing if you bring in a bicycle but you decide to bring it in without the, 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 the handlebar, it, is, it would still be considered a bicycle. Because, and similarly, if you bring in blanks for a night, let us say you end up in, in, in the, 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 the um, practice of producing kitchen knives, but you bring in blanks. Once those blanks have the shape, the essential character of the finished product, even if those blanks are not sharpened, they are blanks, they are not sharp. And then they would all they would be treated as if they were the finished product. It is also important. It also includes the the article whether it is um, presented unassembled or disassembled. In other words, if you bought a a, a, a motor uh, a, a bicycle and you bring it in with in parts. You disassemble the, um, the bicycle and you bring in all the parts in a box. That would be treated not as separate items, but as a bicycle. And, um, and uh, of, of, of course, if you bring in um, a spare tire with the bicycle, that spare tire would be treated separately. It would be treated under the heading referring to spare tires. A reference in a heading to a material or substance shall be taken to include a reference to mixtures or combinations of that material or substance with other materials or substances. If, for example, you bring in a gold bracelet, a gold bracelet, a gold bracelet may contain some copper, or some silver, because usually it is an alloy, the, the product is an alloy, never mind, never mind the combination of other materials, the product would still be considered as, be, as, uh, as gold, classified in the grouping gold. And any reference to, a, uh, to goods of a given material or substance shall be taken to include a reference to goods consisting wholly or partly of such material. For example, suppose you bring in wooden furniture, wooden furniture or wooden chairs to be more specific, but the wooden chair has metal legs or a metal back. That would not disqualify the, 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 uh, the, the, the good from being qualified as Oh, as as um, being wooden. So never mind the presence of the metal, it may still be classified as being um, a, 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 an item of wood, a wooden, a piece of wooden furniture. Now, having said that, it does not mean that the product could only be identified as being or in the classification of wooden furniture, because it may also be classified as furniture of, of, of material other than wood. And in that case, the customs may have to make a determination as to which uh, category or which uh, HS would apply, whether it is wooden furniture or um, furniture other than wooden furniture. And that would depend on the uh, essential characteristic of the particular item. Is it more of wood than of metal? Um, is the metal the more significant uh, component of, 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 of the item? And so there are rules which could be followed in order to meet that kind of um, assessment. Um, quickly, um, I, I will make, go to the very last um, uh, the, la the very last rule, which tells me that in addition to the above uh, provisions, uh, the rule shall apply in respect of the goods referenced therein. 
camera cases, musical instrument cases, gun cases, drawing instrument cases, necklace cases, and similar containers specially shaped or fitted to contain a specific article or set of articles suitable for long-term use and presented with the article for which they are intended shall be classified with such articles when of a kind normally sold therein. In other words, if you bring in a camera and that camera is in a camera case, which is of a type, which is a, 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 a type in which cameras are normally sold, then the camera case would be classified along with the camera. In other words, the camera case would not be separated from the camera in the tariff classification. It would up the, the, or in the HS classification. And the same thing holds for a case in which you bring in a necklace or a watch and so on. If, however, the case is different from what those goods are normally classified therein, then the case would have to be treated uh, separately. If, for example, you bring in frozen meat, when you bring in the frozen meat in a cooler, which can be used repeatedly, then in that case, the cooler is not uh, necessarily the type of packaging that goods of that nature are, are, are traded in, and the cooler is suitable for repeated use, therefore the cooler would have to be treated separately from the, from the meat. And so you have two products, a cooler and the meat. So you'd have to determine whether the, the uh, case is one in which the good is usually traded therein. So all I have done is to give you uh, examples of the type of rules which would determine how a particular commodity is classified. I know that time um, is, is fast spent and then we would need to address any questions that you may have, so I will stop at that and right. um, address the, the, the quest, your question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Atkins, for the information shared this morning. We welcome all questions at this time. Please remember to use the general chat box so we all can have a view of the question being asked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. trying to get the questions. I have not, I'm not able to identify any questions raised. I don't see There's a question, question as to is there any reason why Trinidad and Tobago is not party to the, to the convention? Uh, I do not know that there is any uh, particular reason. It is, of course, in the region, it is not just Trinidad and Tobago. As I said, no um, CARICOM country other than Haiti is party to the convention. However, um, in spite of not being party to the convention, as I mentioned earlier on, 
a number of countries um, apply uh, apply the, um, the, 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 the convention so that a country does not have to be a party to the convention to make use of the HS system. Um, however, countries which are party to the convention have an obligation to utilize the most recent version of the, um, the, the convention. Of course, um, there are implications for, for, for that because uh, when, when, when the, the, each version is revised every five years, it would mean that you'd have to modify your national tariffs, um, the, the structure of, 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 of your national tariffs to take account of the, um, the updates in, 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 in the HS which may be a good thing, but which could be um, very costly. I noticed a question, what would apply to soap making? Uh, the, the, it, it's not, it, it's the, it, the HS would not be applicable to the process of soap making. The question that would be relevant here would be um, the, classification of the product. Where would the soap be classified? Um, and um, I would have to look through the HS in order to find out where in the HS would, would um, soap be classified. I have, a, I have a strong feeling that soap would be among products of the chemical or allied um, industries, and so that would be on that would be the section section six products of the chemical or allied industries, and I look under under that section to the chapter within which soap might fall, and right there you have thirty four chapter thirty four soap organic surface agents, washing preparations, lubricating preparations, artificial waxes, all of those products are in 34. And so if I, um, if I look on the chapter 34, I would be able to identify so. We have another question from Shivani. Just one section, one sec, one one um, minute before we go to Shivani. I am pulling up chapter thirty-four, and you can easily do so from what I shared with you. If you if you open your document, you notice chapter thirty-four to the right. You click on that, and then you have chapter. 34 coming up. So here is chapter 34. There are a number of notes. And then under chapter 34, 3401, we have soap, organic surface, and you have soap. The heading 3401 is soap. You then have to determine what type of soap that I am involved with. Is it for toilet use? It, or it, which would include medicated soap. That would be in 3401.11. And all other soap, which would be soap that you use for washing, for example, would be 3401.19. And then you have soap in other forms, 3401.20. So you notice then there are different categories of soap. So if your if you want to find out what is the tariff, what is the CT on soap, or how, what is the tariff that the US or Canada or any other country imposes on soap, what you do is to go to uh, the, the, the uh, tariff of that country, pull up chapter 34, look under 3401, which is where soap is covered, 
And depending on the soap that you are interested in, let us say you're interested in toilet soap, you look at 340111. And against that, in the country's tariff, you will notice what the customs duty is. Or if you want to know what is the rule of or the rules of origin on the trade agreement. In other words, what condition must the soap meet in order for you to be able to treat to trade in the soap duty free? What you do is to pull the rules of origin, look for the product using the tariff number 340111, and against that you will find a column with the rule pertaining to toilet soap. So I, I think that that should help you um, with the question on the soap. You mentioned another question, um, um, Tanika. And yes, uh, it's from Shivani. Mm -hmm. She would like to know how to access other countries' eight-digit level tariffs. Oh, the, the, that the, um, that request. Sometimes the eight-digit level tariffs, such as those of the U.S. and Canada, those are available online. So you simply go on Google and you you Google in the national tariff of Canada of the U.S. Um, and then you will you will find their their their, their tariff schedules. Again, the, the schedules will be along the lines of the HF. So you follow the same pattern and against their particular tariff, uh, against a particular heading, you will find the breakdown of the, at the subheading level, the eight digit subheading level, and the particular tariff which would apply to, the, uh, to its subheading. I noticed a question from Erika. I produce uh, fabric handbags, beach wraps using natural fibers. And so she's interested in where will these fall? Again, Erica, if you have the, the, um, the document which I shared, if you look at the, at the different um, sections, you will notice there is a section uh, 12, which deals with Let me, let me be sure that I'm right here. Footwear, headgear, umbrellas, sun umbrellas, walking sticks, uh, riding crops and parks, prepared fed and articles made um, there all. Uh, now, depending, depending on your, depending on the particular item, if the item is one made from cloth, textiles and other, textile um, articles, or if it is, in, in, in that case, made from, from other fabric, you could um, look on the, the section, sec, the, the section um, 12, and uh, your item should be there. Let me see whether there is any other relevant um, section no that would be here. so again as i said depending on what 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 um fabric or what material that you use is it from textile and textile articles that would be on section um, 11 if it is otherwise you can look on the chapter 12 and um your product would be would be should be listed should be listed there if if the if if um if you find that your article is not listed in any of the chapters, it may be um it may be listed under section uh, twenty, which deals with miscellaneous uh, manufactured articles. For example, toys are covered on, on the section. Uh, 20, actually in chapter 95. Furniture, bedding, mattresses, mattress supports, for example, these are all covered under section 20. It 
see whether there's any other question that I might have missed. How can one acquire local names of green seasonings from the CARICOM countries? Now, certainly that is not covered under the um, under the the um, the HS um, uh, Camelita because remember the HS deals with products at the international level, so that any green seasoning at the local level, you definitely would have to to um, to make contact with the um, individual countries because that would not if the if the names differ across countries that would be contained either in the local um, their national um, tariffs but but um, certainly not in the region if the regional tariffs or regional um, uh, the CT, if the product has a particular name which is specific to the particular country. The HS applies to all countries and therefore it has to be very broad. And that is why countries have the flexibility to go to the eight and 10 digit level and those you'd find in the national tariff. So the national tariff of Trinidad and Tobago would identify specific products. Shadow Beni, for example, um, may or may not be. I know it is Shadow Beni is a, a, a product widely used in in Trinidad and and Tobago, and um, it may be identified as a specific herb in the tariff of Trinidad and Tobago. For me to know, I would have to look at Trinidad and Tobago national um, tariff. It would not be in um, either the CT or the HS because that's not a product which is generally traded in, certainly not under that name, so that it would fall under the broad category of other groups. And so that would be at the, at the um, six digit level, not at the very specific eight or 10 digit level. Any other question? Alcohol mixed beverages. Now again, um, I can tell you, if, if you look at, I want you, I definitely want you uh, following this session to make use of the HS nomenclature 2017 document that I sent. Send. Look at it and find where your product falls. But if you, to answer your question, section four, prepared foodstuffs, beverages, spirits, and vinegar. So I know right away that this is the section that I would be looking under because all beverages, spirits, and vinegar, tobacco, and manufactured uh, tobacco substitutes are in section four. Under section four, there are a number of chapters, one of which is chapter 22, beverages, spirits, and vinegar. So if I go over the same document I shared with you, and I go over to, if I should close this, to chapter 22. Look at 22, you click on the right, 22 should come up. This is chapter 22, beverages, spirits, and vinegar. What are the products here? At 2201, the first heading, we have all the waters, water, including natural water, and not containing added sugar. So any water in which you've not put in any added sugar would be there. 2202, the second heading would be water in which you have added sugar, hmm? like your flavored water. Or um, 
It also includes non-alcoholic beverages, but it does not include uh, fruit or vegetable juices, right? So you have, if you have non-alcoholic beverages, such as um, beverages which, which, um, which might be a drink, non-alcoholic beer, for example, your ginger beer, which does not contain alcohol, that would be under 2202. So depending on your specific product, that's where it would be classified. What is the product exactly that you are producing? If it is a product which does not contain any um, added sugar, it would be under 2201. If it has an added sugar or flavoring and that kind of thing, it would be under 2202. And then 2202, there are a number of subheadings, 220210, which would be only the waters which contain added sugar. And you have a second subheading, other, which has two secondary subheadings. Non-alcoholic beer is in 2202.91, and all other um, uh, waters would be in 2209. Beer made from malt is in 2203. Wine or fresh grapes is in 2204. Vermouth and other wine or fresh grapes is in 2205. In 2206, you have other fermented um, beverages. Undenatured, undenatured ethyl alcohol of a very high strength is in 2207. And then 2208 is also um, uh, undenatured ethyl um, alcohol of a, of, a, of a volume less than 80%. So you have one which is more than 80% by strength, less than 80% by by strength, so you have your vodka, your liqueurs, your gin, all of this would be here. And if none of those, uh, well, the, the, this, this on, on what we have there, all beverages would find some category here, um, including vinegar and substitutes for vinegar, which is contained in 2209. So to answer your question, it would be under section on the chapter 22 and depending on the exact nature of the product that you have you can identify the heading and the relevant sub heading so i would have to know the very specific details of the product okay Okay, I think that's the sort of question I see so far. Say that again. The, 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 it's alcoholic beverages. If it's alcoholic, the beverages would be, or all the beverages would be in that chapter. Well, no, well, no. If, 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 the, if it is a dairy product, if it is a dairy product which contains, contains um, alcohol, then that would be in a different, in a different, um, in a different um, classification. But in, in that case, it is a beverage. It's a beverage. So once it is a, a, a beverage, it would fall under that particular, particular section. Now, if, for example, it was something like um, ice cream, um, which has alcohol, then that would, be, that would be different. But if it is a drink, um, which happens to have both milk, say, let's say something like Bailey's, which has both milk, and alcohol, then that would be classified under the same chapter 22, you know, in which you have, in which you have your, your, your products um, of, of, um, of, of alcohol, beverages, spirits, and vinegar, okay? Any other questions? Okay, so that brings us to the end of the session.
special thanks to all participants for taking time out of your busy schedules to participate in this webinar. Before you leave the platform, allow me to speak with you about the International Trade Specialist Program. This program is attainable through the EBSI Export Academy of Ireland, is a highly interactive like e-learning program and is recognized by the Institute of Export in the UK. As an exporter, you can qualify to pay 400 euros for the program, which is currently valued at 1,800 euros. For more information, feel free to contact me, Tanika Phillips. We also value your feedback and would appreciate if you can complete the evaluation survey, which will be sent to you shortly. Thank you and do enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, thank you. And goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for coming again. Okay, my pleasure. I know it's a complicated subject, but once participants and take time off and, and examine the, 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 the nomenclature, examine the schedule, they would be able to get a, a, a hold of it. The key is understanding how to identify your product at the heading and subheading there. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.